Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how you can use scriptable objects in order to mark enemy types, and can be used for other types of things as well, such as an ability type, whether it wants to be poisonous or fire damage, or a fire enemy or poisonous enemy, or just to simply mark a character in the game as being a player, an NPC, or an enemy, however you need to differentiate them. So right now, in this current example, there's no typing, we have spikes that will deal damage to a targetable object that walks on top of them. So the targetable object is a script component attached to my mushroom enemies, which is one way of checking if an object meets certain requirements. Another way we can filter our enemies is by using tags. So up here in tags, you can add a string such as enemy, where if you check for that tag and the object has that tag, then we can have our scripts react to the tag being set on the object. However, first off, the tags are stored as strings, which is often not preferable because it's really easy to mistype a string. But also, you can only have one tag per object, which is a huge limitation because a object may want to acquire multiple types. You could also use an enum variable, which would allow you to set multiple types, but enums have to be hard-coded into your C-sharp scripts. But if you do it using scriptable objects, then you can create a new type simply by right-clicking, going to Create, finding your scriptable object type, creating the scriptable object type, and then referencing it on your object. So in this scene right now, the demo is that we have mushroom enemies that are going to walk on top of the spikes over here. After the mushrooms take 10 damage, their health is going to drop to zero and they will die. Now these spikes using the damage on collision component are checking if the object that walks on top of them and collides with these spikes has the targetable object component, which is a fine way of checking if a object meets certain requirements, but we want to add types but we want to filter it down further because not all targetable objects are going to be enemies. Not all targetable objects are going to be. So we can use so we can use things like tags, enums, or scriptable objects in order to filter that down further. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play on the scene. As you can see, we got the enemies walking to the death over there, and all three of them die. So first, let's show how it might look like if you're using simple tags. Then we'll do it using scriptable objects, and I'll demonstrate how the scriptable objects can be a better option. So let's go take a look at this spikes damage on component script. I'll open that up in Visual Studio. So here we can see that all we need to check is that. I, so here all we're checking initially is that the collision has a game object and that game object has the targetable object component. So anything that is a targetable object is going to take damage. So this is a function that is on the targetable object script. So a targetable object can take damage. Now let's uncomment this bit out here so that we can check for the tag. Okay, so now if the tag is enemy, then the target is going to take damage. So if I hit play, nothing's going to happen because these mushrooms are currently untagged. Okay, great. Now let's try changing one of them to be a enemy tag. So I'll have to create that tag, add tag. So let's add a custom tag. I'll type in enemy as a string. Be careful you don't mistype anything because otherwise it won't work. And... Now let's take one of these mushroom enemies and make it an enemy. Okay, let's hit play. So the first one should be ignored. So now let's go ahead and hit play and only one of these should die and the other two shouldn't. So that would technically be one option, but then that tag is also used up for everything. So like you can't set a second tag if you need it to have a second tag for any other reasons in your game. The only tag you'd have is the enemy tag. Okay, so let's create a scriptable object script inside of the tutorial folder so i'm going to create a new c sharp script and let's just call it a targetable type or whatever you prefer to call it i double click into the script and we're going to change it from a mono behavior to a scriptable object okay so if you don't already know a mono behavior is attached to your game objects as a component but a scriptable object is going to be stored in your assets folder so because it's in your assets you can reference it across different script you can reference it across different game objects in your scenes, even if it's multiple references to game objects that are stored in different scenes because it exists in your assets folder. So you can basically use it anywhere as long as you reference the object. Then up here, we need to do create asset menu as a attribute. And I will do file name and we'll call it targetable type here. Technically, these are optional parameters. And we'll do menu name scriptable objects slash targetable type or actually tutorial for targetable type since this is technically the fourth tutorial on this uh, scriptable object series feel free to check out the other videos too 
Okay, so a scriptable object does not have start and update methods, but we can use this to store data that we need across other objects in our game. Now, technically, we could use the scriptable object as it is right now. We don't have to add any extra fields here because the scriptable object asset is already going to be a unique type for the objects in our game, but we could add other fields here if we want. So just for fun, I'll add a couple and I am going to use the attribute field serialize field here. So this right here creates an automatic backing field to the property we're about to create. And then the serialize field will make sure that that is exposed in the inspector when we look at our scriptable object. And let's do public uh, string display name get and we'll say private set. The reason for the private set is that we don't want any other game object to be able to edit this data. We only want to be able to edit it in the inspector. So this is kind of important because a scriptable object if you change it during runtime, any of its values, those actually save after the game stops running. Because those objects don't exist inside of the scene, they exist outside of the scene, so the data will be persistent. And that can be a big advantage of scriptable objects, but you also have to be really careful you don't override data that you didn't actually mean to change permanent. And we can just put in another field here, serialize field. And let's just add another one here for fun, just to give you an idea of a what you could do with these targetable types. So we'll serialize the field and I'm gonna do public, I think I want, and then I want sprite, I believe, and we can call this icon get private set. So with this data, if you ever needed to get the display name, the proper display name that you wanna show in the game for the targetable type, then you can just reference this field on the scriptable object or the property rather. And then if you needed an icon that you wanted to display wherever you show the targetable type, then you can reference this property as well. So let's go back out to Unity again, and I'm going to right click now, go to create scriptable objects, and we should have our tutorial for targetable type. So you'll notice that this is the menu path, the scriptable objects, and then tutorial for targetable type. So that is going to correspond with what we have right here, scriptable objects slash tutorial for targetable type. And this is the name of the object that gets created, targetable type. So now we don't want all of our objects to be called targetable type one, two, three, four, five. So let's rename this object to be enemy as a type. And the display name can be enemy. And the icon, let's just grab something random. I don't know, you probably have like a proper icon for this, but I'll just grab something random. So now this is a scriptable object we can use inside of our other scripts. So let's go to the enemy and make it so that we can set this type in the targetable object. So I'm gonna edit the targetable object script and then let's create, let's say an array. I'll do it as a property as well. And we'll do public targetable type square brackets for an array. And I'll call it types get and then private set. So we can only change it in the inspector or inside of this script. Now let's go back out and we should see this array here. Oh, I do want that to be a capital letter though. So let's make sure I capital that uh, property name. Okay, there we go. Now let's jump into the prefab for this enemy and let's add a type. So we'll have one here for the size of the array and then I'll select a targetable type from the list and there we go. We select the enemy type. Now let's say you want to add other types like player. So let's do that really quickly. Right click, create scriptable objects, targetable type, rename it to player. Uh, let's make the display name player. And if you want, you can set an icon. And just like that, we've created a new type of targetable types, and we can assign this to a player game object. As you can see from the targetable object inspector, we could also add extra types here. So uh, I don't know. Uh, let's just right click here and create a new targetable type. And let's say immune to traps as a type. Why not? Display name immune to traps. Let's click on the mushroom enemy. So now if we want to make a object immune to traps, then we just need to set this type. And then in the trap, we need to reference that the object that collides does not have this type. Okay, so let's start by taking the spikes and only making it apply to enemies. So damage on collision, let's edit this script. And we want to keep our components as generic as possible. So rather than just saying, don't allow the targetable type enemy here directly in the script. What we can instead do is have a field that will reference the targetable types we want to damage and then check for that inside of the script. So here's what I would do. 
let's do a field serialize field and then we'll do public character ball type we can call it damage ball type get private set if you want you could make this if you want you could make this an array just so that you can have more than one types and maybe that would be a good idea just thinking for the long run you can always have an array of one so there's not much of a downside there okay so now instead of checking for the tag using a gross string let's go ahead and check if target dot types and i'm going to use link queue to check the first array to see if it has a match with the second array so i'm going to be wanting to look for intersect here control period to bring this menu up and then using system dot link queue and we're going to intersect this with the second array so damageable types okay and this is going to get all of the matches between those types I'm going to check the count on that, and if the count is greater than zero, then we're going to allow the target to take damage. So let me write a comment here. Okay, so essentially, if the target has one or more matching types with the damageable types of this component, make it take damage. So if this array matches anything from the target's array, then it's going to take damage. Okay, let's go back out, and let's make sure that our damage on collision script has the damageable type assigned. So I'm going to jump into the spikes. Uh, prefab there. Let's add a damageable type and I'm going to select enemy here. So we could also, if we want, click here and add player. So now the spikes can damage enemies and players. And we don't have to hard code that into the script. We just have to reference the targetable type scriptable objects that we want to use for that script. So this is really flexible. Hopefully you can see that. Um, let's go back out now and let's uh, hit play and see if they still take damage. Okay, we have an error um double click okay looks like i just have one extra curly bracket there so let's remove that and go back okay and let's hit play and see if our guys still take damage okay cool they do so let's prove that that works as intended by also removing the enemy type from the targetable object go back out hit play do 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 they're walking and oh look at that they're all immune to the damage now, uh, that's not really the way I want them to be immune to the damage. I still want them to have the enemy type. So let's add that back in inside of the prefab, of course. So it applies to all of these objects. And then let's add a little bit more to damage on collision and add an immune type. So edit script. And we can just do the same thing up here. Make a property with a automatic field. So we can just have an array here. Kind of do the same thing and we'll have immune types get private set so we're going to do essentially the same thing just checking if these damageable types passes we also want to make sure that none of the immune types are in there maybe this is a little overkill but just showing one thing you could do so let's add curly braces down here bring this bit inside and we're also going to now check if uh the immune types intersects with the target types. So if target types, target.types intersects with, uh, now we're doing immune types, and the count is greater than zero, then we actually don't want it to do anything. Um, so this would probably be better as equals equals zero, so that we can put this inside of here. And then if the object is immune, meaning this fails, then we just want nothing to happen. So if the target has no type inside of it that matches the immune types in this component, skip, otherwise continue dealing damage. Okay, so back in the inspector, we can now set an immune type. So let's add one, and I'm going to select immune to traps. So now if the enemy, so now if the object that walks in is a targetable object, and it has a damageable type which matches either enemy or player, but it does not have a type that matches immune to traps, then we will deal damage to that object. So that's quite a few checks for this, but so all of our mushroom enemies are currently just enemies, but they're not immune to traps. So I'm going to take, let's say two of them, and I'm going to add a extra type, not in the prefab, but just these instances that we have in the game scene. So I'm going to add a new immune to trap. And let's take this mushroom enemy and also make them immune to traps. So two are immune to traps and one is not. So let's hit play and we can watch our guys walk across the screen. And uh, that did not quite work 100% as I thought. Okay, so let's find out what went wrong here. 
if the target types intersects with immune types dot count is equal to zero, then the target takes damage. Ah, okay, it's not the code. I actually just forgot to set the type in the prefab. So you can see these other spikes, they don't have the immune type set, only this one. And you can see that this is not something that exists in the prefab because it's bolded right here. So let's uh, remove that. And actually a easier way would just be to apply whatever's on this to the prefab. So let's click the three dots, go to modified component, apply to prefab spikes. And now all of the spikes sh should work like that. So let's hit play and I will mushrooms will walk across. Okay, so one of them died and the others did not. Okay, yeah, that's actually what we expect. Okay, so two of them were immune. For a second, I thought I only made one immune. So we can hit play one more time and just double check that. So two should survive and the third one does not because it's not immune to traps. So that's pretty much it for this video on showing how to use scriptable objects as a typing mechanism for enemies. But you can easily apply this to things like ability typing or statistics if you have like strength, intelligence, uh, constitution, you know, that kind of stuff that RPGs have. Um, then this kind of scriptable object system can work pretty well for that. And don't forget that with scriptable objects, you can also set fields. So these objects can have other data with them aside from just being a simple object file on your system. And in addition to that, you can still write functions for them and you can call those functions from other mono behavior components. So for instance, if you wanted to do something like public void log display name, then you can write it as a function just like any other C sharp script. So let's log the display name here. Okay, and now that we have this function, we could go to a different object which has those types. And we could say like on start, for instance, the mono behavior uh, timing that we could say for each, uh, let's see, targetable type and types, we're going to type dot log display name. Now, of course, it would be pretty easy to just go ahead and type here something like type dot display name, which would basically do the same thing as this function, but just showing you can use functions and scriptable objects. OK, but now that we have that, we can go back out here, hit play, and we can see that three of our game objects have enemy as a uh, scriptable object type, and we have two that have immune to traps as their type. So we looped through both of their types to get this display name to print out. So that's really it for this tutorial on uh, how to use scriptable objects for typing inside of the Unity engine. If you want to see all of the scripts and the demo for this, I'm going to have it up on Patreon. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.